Good morning. How you doing? Uh, I'm sorry about that. Nobody should be that fucking chipper. Sorry, won't happen again. Anyways, welcome back to All Right, What's Next? Today we're going to talk about wiring. Uh, if you do any sort of uh, automotive wiring, uh, trailer wiring, whatever, usually your wiring looks like this. And if you just take this and uh, zip tie it down to whatever you're running uh, power to an accessory light or whatever you happen to be installing, eventually this is going to vibrate, rub on a piece of metal, it's going to short out, it's going to melt. If you got an inline fuse, it might just blow the fuse, but a good possibility it's going to fucking start on fire. Uh, I'll put some pictures here of what my four-wheeler looked like right after it happened, but my four-wheeler caught on fire, nearly burnt down my freaking house. A uh, <clears throat> couple, couple years ago, uh, the only thing I had to move snow was my four-wheeler. Had the blade on it. Uh, we had a snowstorm coming. I got home from work before it started getting bad, but I had to get back out first thing in the morning. I had an appointment that I had to get to, and the blade wouldn't work. I couldn't. The winch controls that raised the blade freaking wouldn't work. A wire had broke off down inside the uh, steering column, and it's like 10 below zero outside, and I'm out in the garage freezing my ass off. I couldn't get to the damn wire to, tr to, to splice it without taking the whole fucking four-wheeler apart. So I ran a hot wire from the battery up across through the plastic underneath the seat up to the uh, winch control switch, tied it in. It was supposed to be temporary, like just to use it for that day or the next day anyways, and then I would take it off of there, and I didn't take it off of there. But I didn't worry about it because everything's plastic. There was no metal anywhere. There's nothing that it could freaking touch, or at least so I thought. I overlooked a screw that was through a piece of plastic into the, the uh, four-wheeler frame, and the wire ran across that, rubbed through over the next couple of weeks or whatever. Actually, it's it a couple of months because it was warm weather when when the near catastrophe happened. It rubbed through, arced, started on fire, started melting the seat, caught the seat foam on fire, caught the plastic on fire. Uh, the youngest boy came walking up, seen smoke rolling out of the garage, seen it was a four-wheeler was on fire. Luckily, we parked the four-wheeler in the garage with it in neutral because it was a bitch to get into the park. So he just ran up, grabbed the four-wheeler, shoved it, my driveway slopes away from the garage, so it rolled out of the freaking garage and then down, hit the fence. He ran in the house, got the fire extinguisher, put the fire, uh, put the fire out, saved the four-wheeler, but it was so fucking close to setting that gas tank on fire. You, you look at the pictures, that gas tank was starting to melt through. So he saved my house, saved the four-wheeler, so he got an Xbox One out of that. But uh, anyways, if I would have wrapped that wiring, uh, that wouldn't have happened. You want some... Uh, anti-abrasion coating on your wire. See, this shit right here, all of the, there's a lot of different names for it. I know two, wire wrap and split loom. And it's just, it's like corrugated tubing and it's split in half. And the way you used to do the install where you take your wires and you find that split and you get the wires shoved in here to get started. The larger diameter stuff isn't hard to work with. This smaller stuff can be a bitch. And basically, once you get it in there, then you're just kind of shoving the wire down through that split. And it can get very time consuming, especially if you're running an extremely long harness. Now this one has been already freaking split uh, used several times, so it, it's a little easier to get the wiring in. But if you gotta run a 20 foot fucking harness, this can take up to a good 45 minutes to run the wires down through this small stuff. And it was just getting to be a pain in the ass. And I knew they had special tools. You can buy them on Amazon, and, but I don't wanna spend the money on it. Looked up online, went to a website called Thingiverse and it's just uh, all 3D print files. So if you've got a 3D printer at home, uh, found a uh, file for uh, what's called just, it's called a 
loom installation tool is what it's called. And if you go to Thingiverse and you look it up, it's gonna be this big massive thing for doing like one inch diameter, stuff like this. But once you download the file, then you go into to the slicer program or whatever the fuck it's called and just resize it. And had my nephew freaking print it for me. He's got an Ender 3 Pro. And I think it took three tries before we got the right size out of it. And this is what it ends up looking like, like a little freaking torpedo shaped thing. The wire goes in here. Now the file that you'll print, it comes with a little tube that will slide down into here. And what that's, it's the wire goes through that tube, goes into here, and then you turn it and it, uh, it's got a slot in it. You turn it to where the, the slot offsets from this slot. So it locks the wires in place so it can't fall out. With this tiny little thing, it fits perfectly with this wire. So that little tube was useless. So I just threw them all away. Once we got the right size, then we uh, just printed out, I think 30 of them on one print plate. It was like a two and a half hour print. But a finger numbing, extremely painful, time consuming task of putting this wire into this loom that used to take a good 45 minutes to an hour, I can make a uh, 15, 20 foot loom in like 30 seconds. And pretty much what you do is you take your wire and you get it started. It where just the ends in there, and then I like to clamp it the end into a vise. Now, if you've got a little bit of extra wire, that's fine, because then you just cut that end off once you're done. Then you take this guy, and that little torpedo shape is going to fit inside your uh, split loom. And first, take the wires, shove them down in here, like that. Let me, I'm going to freaking bring the camera around. All right, wire goes in there like that. Then you take your torpedo thingamajigger and you get it started. Once it's down into the, the tube, and you shove the wire then behind it, just like that. Now you're set. With it clamped into place, all that you gotta do is just hold on to your expand loom crap here. and it's fully wrapped. The only thing about these is uh, because it's made out of plastic, uh, eventually it starts to cut through here and these wings will fall off. But, hold on, I'm gonna move the camera around again. Mm -hmm. Ooh, I gotta zoom out. So now your wire is completely freaking encased into nice, uh, I don't like my camera the way it's sitting right there. Hold on a second. I got to turn this here. That's better. So now you got wiring that is fully encased into an abrasive resistant uh, wiring protection harness thingy. Like I said, if you're gonna do any sort of automotive, freaking run accessory wires, anything like that, get this stuff. You can buy it at a hardware store. I don't know how much of this shit costs. And if you're gonna do it, and if you ever freaking try and do this by hand by just feeding that wiring in there, it's a pain in the ass. You can go to Amazon and buy these little things Go to Thingiverse, it's a free file to download if you've got a 3D printer. Printed up 30 of them, probably cost, oh, I bet you it used maybe $2 worth of filament, maybe $3 worth of filament, if even that, to print up 30 of these things. 
Uh, I can get off of one of them. I can probably do about 100, 120 feet of uh, loom wrap before it cuts through and the, the wings fall off and then I gotta grab another one. Best way to freaking protect your wiring. Um, on Thingiverse, it's just called Loom Installation Tool. It is a free downloadable file. Download it, print it. Uh, I don't know if it'll work in resin printers. I'm sure it will. I don't have a resin printer yet. I don't even have a, uh, a filament printer. Uh, you know, the nephew's got a filament printer. I made him fucking print them. I will have a resin printer hopefully within the next six months. Now, I won't show you the, the uh, 3D printer that we used. Just look it up online. It's an Ender 3 Pro. They're cheap, but they come as a kit. If I think about it, maybe I'll link one down below in uh, off of Amazon. I think you can get them off of Amazon. What are they, about 250, 300 bucks for your basic starter filament printer. If I do put a link below and you click on it, it's gonna be an affiliate link. So if you buy it or anything off of that link, I'll get a small portion of that money. It doesn't make your cost any different, but it'll help me fucking buy more stupid shit so I can do more stupid videos. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you next time, or you'll see me next time. I won't see you. Subscribe, notifications, blah, blah, blah. Laters.